just one of the most astounding features of this pyramid and any of these pyramids is just how massive they are when you stand next to them. Like, it's just huge. Now there's a lot of vegetation growing on it. There's dogs walking on it. Buenos dias, good morning. It is another day here in Mexico City. And today it is Saturday and I am looking to visit the famous Mexican pyramids that are in Teotihuacan. <laughs> Teotihuacan. Teotihuacan. It's a word that's very difficult to pronounce for foreigners, I think. But <clears throat> this place is super famous. You've probably heard about it. And I'm going to explore it today and I'm going to show you how to get there from the center of the city or maybe wherever you are staying in Mexico City. So I'm in Coyacan right now and I have to catch a tram or a trolley bus all the way to the bus station in the north and then from the bus station take a bus to the pyramids which the total travel time, the journey, should be about two and a half hours. So I'm gonna bring you along, show you how to get there and then we're gonna explore the pyramids. So let's get there. Okay, so after I uh, hopped on the trolley bus from Mexico City to the bus station, um, the journey was about 50 minutes for me and you just take it to the central bus station in the north and when you get to the central bus station in the north, all you have to do is go to gate 8 and you will see a window that is displaying the price and the bus to go to uh, Teotihuacan and it's 104 pesos round trip so buy your round trip ticket after you buy it you just kind of go around the side to gate number eight or window number eight door number eight and then you, there's a, a line you have to wait in and you get in line for the bus somebody uh, has to pat you down check you you get on the bus and then it's about an hour on the bus to the actual site here and uh, the bus can be a little crowded there's assigned the seats and make sure you keep your ticket for your return journey they said and then you arrive here so i've just arrived here to teotihuacan and as you can see there's a pyramid behind me and now it's time to explore it the entrance cost was 80 pesos for me uh, for a foreigner i guess maybe it's different for mexicans i'm not really sure 80 pesos is pretty good and then they also charge 50 pesos to use a camera um, I guess if you leave your camera in your bag as you're going through, they won't know, they don't say anything. Um, but yes, it's 50 pesos to use video equipment, I guess. So, without further ado, let's explore. So there are a few things to know about when you come here to Teotihuacan. And a couple of those things are, one being, you do not need a guide. Uh, if you want a guide, you can hire a guide. You can um, go solo by yourself, you know, with the facts, the information that you already know, or you can hire a guide and learn some things. So you choose what you want to do. Now, there are two ways to get here. One way is how I just came here. So it's by myself, you take the, the local transportation and you come here. Another way is to organize a tour, organize a travel, and you come here through some organization like Airbnb or some other organization maybe listed on TripAdvisor, whatever it be. Those are your two options, but the prices are going to vary significantly. And uh, here I want to just quickly note the way I'm going to explore this area is to start at the maybe it's northeast or so so the end where the temple of the moon is and then work my way the other way towards the temple of the sun and to see everything along the way so first let's get to the temple of the moon and i can tell you some stuff about it Thank you. 
So when you arrive here, no matter which part of this complex you go to first, you're gonna see there's a lot of vendors. They're selling a lot of crafts and different things. Now the most common thing you're gonna see are the like little wooden jaguar uh, crafts that you can blow into to make some noise to imitate the sounds of such animals. And everyone's selling them and you can actually find them all over Mexico City. But when you come here and see them, you're going to notice how annoying and obnoxious they are. People are just constantly blowing them to get your attention. There's tourists that are trying them out to see if they want to buy them and the noise is quite loud. I know it's part of the culture and all that, but uh, some people do it a little obnoxiously and you have to deal with that. But anyways, we're here at the Temple of the Moon. So this is one of the temples um, or the Pyramid of the Moon. This is one of the pyramids. We have Pyramid of the Moon, Pyramid of the Sun, and then there's a few things in between. There's an archeological site right here and there's many smaller pyramids all along here. And um, it's quite fascinating, the structure of it, the way it's built. As you can see, there are many small stones that are just like stuck into the material. Then you have more uh, regular square shaped, rectangle shaped blocks to form the stacking or the pyramid like. And uh, also, I think at one point, you used to be able to climb these, but maybe since COVID or, you know, before COVID or after, I'm not really sure, but it doesn't appear that you can really climb any of them. There's only one spot that's near here so you can see the viewpoint, but that's about it. But I believe in the past, you used to be able to climb to the top of them, or at least to a certain point. So one thing you have to notice here at the Pyramid of the Moon is that when you stand in front of it, it's really fascinating because of the, the design of it and how they built it and stuff. And you think, okay, it's not so big. But if you come to the side where you have this fence where it's roped off, uh, you can see a better angle. Actually, if you look up, you'll see it's much bigger than just what it looks like from the front. If you get to the side, you can see it goes further back. It's just the front part, maybe it seems as if this is the part they restored to make it very appealing for tourists. There's a plaque before every uh, pyramid that tells you a little bit about it. Its height, its dimensions, the length, and maybe some historical information about if there used to be a temple on top and if the temple was there because there was a room. So a couple things I've noticed walking around this little area here. This is called Plaza Luna, so Plaza of the Moon because you have the, the moon pyramid there. And as you can see when you get further away from it, it's bigger. The steps go higher, there's more to it. So you have the option of having a really big view from far away or a really fine detail view of being up close. The one thing you'll notice is that a lot of the tour groups are here and they have people clapping their hands near the smaller um, pyramids or the smaller temples. <laughs> to create like this echoing sound. It's quite crazy to see all these small pyramids on the side because it's possible that these were known as maybe the tombs of some of the different people of power. Uh, it may not be true, it's just something that they thought could be possible. There's still a lot of uncertainty with this place and how it came about, uh, how the rain pretty much ended and how it fell. Uh, there's a lot of, lot of uncertainty, a lot of different um, theories and what happened from different scientists from a long time ago and today. When you come here and you're in the Plaza Luna area and you kind of come up where the archaeological site is here, there's a place that's uh, called Quetzalapapalotl, 
It's really difficult to pronounce, it's a very long name, but you can buy some souvenirs, uh, some snacks, something to drink, so if you didn't bring anything with you, uh, you can definitely do that here, you can find them, or you can bring stuff with you. Plenty of people have their own backpacks, they brought their own snacks, they brought their own drinks, it is totally advisable. But now, uh, I think I'm gonna explore the Palacio Quetzal Papa Loto. It's a very, very difficult name to pronounce. It's like you came back to Buen dia. Buen dia. Buen dia. Okay, I just left that plaza there, or the Palacio de uh, Quetzalcoatl. Oh, it's such a difficult word. But a lot of it was roped off, so you actually couldn't do the full loop. You could tell there used to be a full loop because down below, where it looked like it was like a citadel, where you know maybe there were some rooms, there was a plaque that you could read, but there was no way to access that area. And um, it was really cool though. You can see that the design, they restored a lot of it, but some of the original design was still there, which showed uh, the famous animals of the Quetzal or the owl. And this is just a type of bird, so you can see it on the pillars and it's really um, engraved into it. But they definitely, I think they definitely did a lot of work to restore it and keep it, you know, very appealing for tourists that are still coming. Also, that area where it's like an open courtyard up to the sky where there's no roof, there were different rooms and those rooms were for like the elite members. And they each had their own like little patio or ports where they can kind of hang out on. Um, at that time, I'm sure they didn't have modern chairs like we have now, but something like little cushions to sit on and, you know, just enjoy the fresh air. So as I make my way back down this long road here, this road is called the Avenue of the Dead. So uh, that's the, the name of it, that's where you see it on the map, you see it in blogs, you see it everywhere, that's what its name does. And it's very interesting because as you walk down, you have more structures, right? And when you look at these structures, it's pretty fascinating because you have rocks that were like stuck into the material, then you have the blocks, like type of blocks that usually you find with pyramid structures like in Egypt. Um, different material of course. And then you have other formations where it's like modern uh, construction where we, you know, we shape things with uh, concrete and, you know, you can make like different um, angles and everything. And it's just amazing to see how it is blended right in with all the different types of architecture if that makes sense. So this building here that I was just looking at with the different blends of architecture, it's called the Templo de la Agricultura. Uh, if I pronounce that right in Spanish, but basically Temple of Agriculture. And it's very fascinating because from what I can read on the sign, it said that uh, it was one of the first mm, structures to be restored by the scientists way back in 1886. Oh no, it was found in 18... 1886 it was found and 1922 it was restored but um, there's whoa look at that there's some lizards on it I think some type of lizards whoa look at that ancient gods all of the information I have read online uh, before coming here and even some of the information that's displayed around the area one of the most fascinating things to me is that even though this place had its downfall and you know the main civilization at certain points in time were pretty much like exterminated and just declined rapidly there were still civilizations that would come after and remain and live here and you know try to survive it's almost like you know they had no choice, so they decided to stay and continue on even though such horrifying things had happened to the area. But it's really fascinating because they found out that throughout history, this place served as a you know, Mesoamerican city for many different cultures of Mexico and you know, pre-Columbian uh, era. era. 
So one of the most famous spots, well, <laughs> there's so many famous spots here to see, like most recommended, uh, most popular, is this one here behind me. It is the painting or the mm, design of a puma. Uh, now this puma has its mouth wide open, its claws are open, and it's really showing its behavior as a puma. And they believe it's a puma, and it kind of looks like some type of puma, panther, uh, that type of animal, but it's been preserved pretty well, and I think they discovered it, they said in like, um, I don't know, 1900s or something? I forget already. Oh, and another thing about the puma that I read on the sign is that it said that behind the puma you can see some different bands of colors and this is meant to represent that the puma uh, is from an aquatic background I guess. So the area I'm walking through now back down the avenue of the dead is known as the plaza of columns because on each side of the avenue are structures that are pretty much mirror like they're identical they look the same and some of them are facing each other perfectly straight across and some are kind of diagonal but it is said that this was the area where some people stayed because they were conveniently located when there were uh, special political events or any type of event that was happening and they needed to be close by. Well, an interesting piece of information I just read from uh, or about the Pyramid of the Moon that I visited earlier is that when you look at the Pyramid of the Moon, you see that nice structure of pyramid in the beginning that's small or in front of it. And then as you get away from it, you see the big part behind it. Well, that's called like the hill or the Cerro Hill, and it's known as the Sacred Mountain. And I'll make my way over to a place called the Conservation of Teotihuacan. So I will say one of the most fascinating parts about the architecture, the design, the structure, the style is that when you look at the wall, you have the little rocks that are embedded in it. And I don't mean the little, little rocks. I mean like the medium sized ones that are bigger rocks. And then there's like some material that is uh, smoothened around it so that the rock has its own like circle shape. But then as you can see, there are little, little, little rocks that are stuck in between to give it like this dotted appearance and from far away it looks super cool and up close it also even looks better because you see the colors really defined and it's quite fascinating and there's <laughs> lizards like all over the wall because of course the wall is radiating heat and it's a nice place for them to uh, thermoregulate a little science fact for you we've spotted the instagrammers there they are getting their perfect instagram photo a little obsessive, I think. So I've entered the Pyramid of the Sun, the pyramid that is known to be the biggest and constructed in one single go. And this is the pyramid that is said to be where the sun god was pretty much worshipped. This is the one monument where it happened and here there has been some some big excavations some big explorations some big researches done big researches no some um, thorough researching done to understand its structure its construction and the overall history of it and um, around it you can find like a moat some designs and there are some smaller temples around it as well just one of the most astounding features this pyramid and any of these pyramids is just how massive they are when you stand next to them like it's just huge like i can't imagine how long it took to build to build definitely probably hundreds of years especially like this one but i believe from what i read on the sign is that it is a solid pyramid meaning that underneath it it is filled with sand dirt it's like a hill so they didn't have to use as much material in terms of rocks and and shaping different blocks to make it, um, you know, stacked on each one, um, if that makes any sense. But it's quite interesting, now there's a lot of vegetation growing on it, uh, there's dogs walking on it that kind of look like um, starving hyenas. So this Pyramid of Sun is quite fascinating.